Hello and welcome to another iteration of our how-to series. Today we will be talking about creature removal spells and how to choose the right ones for your deck. This will be our last video on fundamental card choices in deck building and we are looking forward to tackling more advanced topics in the next episodes in this series. But without further ado, let's get into some creature destruction. Due to the command zone, a good amount of creature removal goes into almost every deck. While other formats may punish that by having a lot of creatureless combo and control decks, Dual Commander will always serve you with a nice few targets for your terminates and fatal pushes. The main question then becomes, how many and what cards do you want to include? To help with those choices, we've separated all spells into different tiers, starting with auto-includes that fit into basically every strategy and ending on those very fringe cards that only the most experienced deck builders dare to put into their hard control piles. This list is ranked by the overall power level of the card, so we are ignoring the fact that sometimes you are forced to play mediocre cards in monocolored decks since they are the best options for those colors. This lets us compare the cards across colors and help with the construction of multicolored commanders, which is very relevant for dual commander decks. So let's start with the first tier, the auto includes. The first card is probably the strongest overall removal in Magic's history, so it's the plowshares. It's mana efficient, hits almost every creature, its instant speed exiles pesky card that might haunt you from the graveyard, and the downside of giving your opponent life is almost never relevant in a normal game of Dual Commander. It puts all the things I will praise about cards in the next few minutes into one powerful tool no Plains Connoisseur ever wants to miss. The second card for white in this tier is Constant Judgment. While it lacks the efficiency and speed that Source has, it trades those for more flexibility in hitting other non impermanents and the ability to go around hexproof and protection. Furthermore, it also allows for some evil trickery, since the card doesn't force you to target something before you resolve it. Let's keep going with our favorites in black. Fatal Push is a worse Swords of Plowshares. But a worse Swords of Plowshares can still be an insane card. Fetchlands allow most decks to get reward online very consistently and the CMC Forge ceiling includes almost every creature played in this format. The other card that fits here in my opinion is the best out of the 1 million CMC2 removal options that black got over the recent years. Eliminate not only gets rid of your opponent's early game aggression, it can also help balance out all the stupid planeswalkers wizards printed over the last few years, because a dead Oko is the best Oko. The final color that has access to tier 1 removal is red. First we have the good old trio of Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning and Flame Slash. The 3 mana value 1 beasts allow you to create some brutal tempo swings in the early turns, answering almost every 1 to 3 drop that your opponent might put out on those turns. While Lightning Bolt is clearly above the other two due to its instant speed capabilities, the other two basically fulfill the same role during an average game, giving up only the instant speed part for Chain Lightning and additionally the ability to hit face or planeswalker for Flame Slash. The fourth card I see as an auto include in red is a Braid. While artifact decks have been declining since the partners that used to support the archetype have been banned, the Braid is still as relevant as it always has been. Hitting Winter Orbs against Hogak or Jitter against almost every creature deck is an upside that can't be underestimated. Usually, you are very happy to trade the tempo advantage you could gain by having one of the three cards mentioned above for some great flexibility and late game relevance. While green and blue both have solid removal options, I didn't include any of them in the tier 1. They just can't keep up with the things the cards I've mentioned so far can pull off and if you are pairing one of these colors with one of the three Madu ones, your deck will almost always only include removal in black, red and white. Last but not least I will talk about a few multicolored removal spells. Lightning Helix, Abrupt Decay, Dreadbore, Terminate and Witherbloom Command are all great removal options that give you a lot of flexibility and other upsides like life gain. There are also some great cards with a mana value of 3, mainly Color Guns Command and Kaya's Guile. Two cards that take the things the CMC2 options do and put them through the roof, often allowing for very efficient 2 for 1s. I will also mention Windicate here. Since the banning of Wasteland, this has become the primary way to interact with lands, while also hitting everything else at a decent mana cost. Now we will come to tier 2. Here we will see a lot of great cards that will make out the main part of your removal in midrange and control decks. First we will start out with the two options White gets. Unexpectedly Absent is one of the few cards with mana value 2 that hits non impermanence without further requirements. The fact that you can use it in response to an opponent's fetch land to shuffle the card into their library is a nice bonus to an already pretty strong card. The second white card is Oust. Swords to Plowshares Little Brother sadly is worse in almost every aspect. Sorcery speed and only tucking the card inside your opponent's deck has some serious downsides. So, it's a great card for every deck that thrives on efficiency and can make use of the tempo advantage gained by removing something for only one mana. Finally, we are getting some blue cards in here. 
While the main way of interacting was already tackled in our counter magic episode, the color also has some ways to deal with cards that already hit the battlefield. These 7 bounce spells with various upsides are great inclusions for every deck that just can't get enough actual creature destruction going. Most of them hit all non-land permanents and some of them even have an additional card attached to it to negate the natural card disadvantage that bounces usually have. Snap and Vapor Snack make great options for tempo-oriented decks, while Cyclonic Rift, Blink of an Eye and Into the Royal are probably better for slower control decks. Another decent option in blue is Leadership Vacuum. The big upside against partners and planeswalker commanders is nice, but it can be pretty underwhelming against very aggressive decks. In black, we keep on going with the mana value 2 goodness. Go for the Throat, Heartless Act and the newly printed Power Word Kill and Infernal Grasp all make an appearance here. You want more removal in your deck? Play those cards and you probably won't regret it. Now we arrive at probably the best removal spell in the whole format. Why is it only tier 2? because it can't be auto-included due to only being good with cheap-ish commanders. So for most CMC4 or buff commanders, this can be a rough card to justify. For everything else, it's showtime. The card is absolutely game-breaking, it allows you to generate game-winning tempo swings on turns where you would've casted your commander anyways, it exiles, it has no other requirement or downside like any other card I've mentioned so far, it really makes me question the ban list sometimes. It's gotten slightly worse though. With the partner bannings, the amount of decks that can really abuse it has gone down. But it still makes me want to quit playing every few games I have to face it. Another, slightly more flexible option is Collective Brutality. While the removal side is kind of lackluster, the card shines in giving you hand information and a way to buy more time against burn decks. It's an all-star in almost every non-aggressive deck. We also can't miss this member in this tier. While it's not the usual color pie breaking madness in our format due to color identity, it's still a great card that fits in most decks that can handle losing a bit of life sometimes. The last black card for now is Murderous Cut. Elf cards have always been really powerful, but you're usually required to play some other cards to help with your graveyard to really make them work. Cantrips, other cheap removal and hand disruption can really go a long way here. In red we got more of the same greatness we already talked in tier 1. All get great upside for also hitting your opponent in the face, which can't be underestimated in a format where board stalls happen a lot. Magmatic Sinkhole is very similar to Murderous Cut. While it has trouble handling some of the larger creatures in our format, it trades that by killing almost every planeswalker in our format. Except the food cooking Oko, of course. When building a tempo deck, Pyrokinesis is a card you don't want to keep at home. While Carter's advantage and the potential for a counter spell blowout is there, the card can win games on its own with backbreaking tempo swings. At the end of tier 2 we still haven't heard a single green card being called. Well, it's because I don't believe that unless you are mono green you will be playing any green removal spells and mainly focus on your proactive game plan. Now for the multicolored options we basically have a collection of a lot of great and especially more flexible cards. If you are in those color combinations, you probably want to include them into your list unless they really go against your deck building archetype. Now we finally arrive at tier 3. Those are the cards you really only include if you are desperate for other answers. We don't really have a lot of experience with some of them, so like everything on this list, the meta you're playing in might change your evaluation and make some of the cards I will be listing better than I give them credit for here. White is represented by Path to Exile. While I do have a personal hatred against this card, in this format it has some merits for very aggressive decks that can finish games before the extra land will eventually lose you the game. Don't play it anywhere else though. Blue has a few more interesting cards. Imprisoned in the Moon can help you against sticky and hard to handle commanders and take them out of the game completely. Boomerang is a decent bounce spell that can be worth it in mono blue. And Chain of Vapor is a nice tool to get every permanent type of the board for all in combo decks. Psionic Blast might be a pretty bad card, but it goes face, so sometimes it sees play in some more aggressive blue lists. Black has a few more options that are usually too expensive or niche. In red we have Galvanic Blast. This card only really sees play in decks that play pure burn or decks that play a lot of artifacts. And we finally have some green cards for you. Both Beast Within and Song of the Dryads are pretty bad cards on their own. But in very specific situations that mainly occur in mono green builds, they can be worth including. A lot of the time it's better to just streamline the project of game plan of your deck and just forget about interacting with your opponent's creatures altogether though. 
And throughout out the list, we have some multicolored inspirations for you. Some of the cards have some nice synergies, so they might go into specific decks. And with this, we conclude this pretty long list, if I look back at it. So thank you for listening, and I hope you took away some inspirations for your future deck building adventures. See you in the next one.